What's good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're in Chicago's richest neighborhood where some of the most wealthy and influential Chicagoans have lived. It's also the home to the original Playboy Mansion, as well as the only museum in North America dedicated to the history of surgery. That's right, we're in the Gold Coast. And in this video, we're gonna answer some questions like, is Gold Coast Chicago the wealthiest urban neighborhood in the entire United States? How much does it cost to live here? And what is there to do in Gold Coast besides sit around and count that money? But before we get started, I have a trivia question for you guys. In 1929, you could rent a 17 bedroom apartment at 1200 North Lakeshore Drive for $1,000 a month. How much money is that in 2020? The borders of Chicago neighborhoods are constantly up for debate. But for our purposes, Gold Coast is bordered on the north by North Boulevard, on the west by Clark Street, and then further south by Rush Street, on the south by Oak Street, and on the east by Lakeshore Drive. To get to Gold Coast, take the CTA Red Line and get off at the division stop, then head east toward the lake. You can also take the 151 bus up Lakeshore Drive and get off at North Avenue, Elm Street, or Oak Street. You can also take the 22, 36, or 72 buses to Gold Coast, which is super accessible via bike along the Lakefront Trail. There are so many ways to get to Gold Coast, but as always, I highly recommend walking, biking, or taking public transportation. The surrounding neighborhoods are Old Town to the west, Streeterville to the south, and Gold Coast lies directly south of Lincoln Park, the actual park. The Gold Coast neighborhood fits perfectly within the Chicago grid, although three very well-known streets change names here due to the fact that they lead directly to the park, and that would be North Boulevard, State Parkway, and Dearborn Parkway. Unlike most neighborhoods in Chicago, Gold Coast has always been an area for the wealthy and elite. In other words, the who's who of Chicago. Before the city was settled by Europeans, this entire area was inhabited by several different Native American tribes. And you gotta figure that this area, very close to the lake and not too far from the river, was highly desirable. They also used Clark Street, AKA the west border of Gold Coast, as an important trail. In the time following Chicago's incorporation as a city, there was no Gold Coast. Once the 1880s rolled along, Potter Palmer left his residence in the fashionable Prairie Avenue district in today's South Loop to build himself and his wife a mansion on Lakeshore Drive that looked just like a castle. Unfortunately, that mansion was demolished in the 1950s, but luckily, several paintings that once hung in that magnificent house are on display at the Art Institute of Chicago. In the years that followed, Palmer sold parcels of land to other wealthy, upper-class Chicagoans, and over the next several years, more mansions, exclusive hotels, and the first luxury apartment buildings began popping up all over Gold Coast. First along Lakeshore Drive, which was extended up here in 1875, and then along Astor Street. This street was named after John Jacob Astor of New York City. Although Astor never lived in Chicago, he was one of the wealthiest men of his time in the entire United States. And naming a street after him brought even more prestige to this small section of the near north side. This neighborhood was given its nickname Gold Coast by college kids returning from the East Coast in the 1920s. The sheer density of wealth that has existed here in the Gold Coast for most of Chicago's history has protected it from urban decay that befell other areas of the near north side. The Astor Street District was made a Chicago landmark in 1975, and the entire Gold Coast District was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1978. Back in the 1980s, Gold Coast was second only to Manhattan's Upper East Side in terms of wealthiest urban neighborhoods in the entire United States. Although today other places have leapfrogged it, Gold Coast remains one of the most affluent districts in the entire country. The Isham House was built in 1899 for Dr. George Swift Isham, a surgeon. In 1959, Hugh Hefner bought it and it became the original Playboy Mansion. Once Hefner left Chicago for the West Coast, he donated it to the School of the Art Institute and it became a dorm. Today, it's divided into several multi-million dollar condos. The original Playboy Mansion was designed in the Georgian Revival architectural style. The Three Arts Club was designed by Halliburton and Roche. It was a home and club for women coming to the big city to study one of the three arts, drama, music, painting. Today, it's the home of Restoration Hardware, and it's a Chicago landmark. The Seven Houses on Lakeshore Drive is a Chicago landmark district that includes seven rare survivors of original Gold Coast mansions built between 1889 and 1917. If you had a DeLorean and traveled back to that time, you'd see these types of mansions all over Gold Coast. 
Other famous homes in Gold Coast include the Archbishop's Residence, a Queen Anne style mansion and the oldest surviving home in the district. Built in 1885, it's been the home to several Archdiocese of Chicago Cardinals. The James Charnley House was a collab between Louis Sullivan and Frank Lloyd Wright. Built in 1892, it rejected the popular classical architectural styles of the time in favor of abstract modern design. The Frank Fisher Studio at 1209 State Parkway was built in 1936 and is a rare Chicago art modern building. Legendary architect John Wellborn Root designed and lived in this house built in 1888. The Patterson McCormick Mansion is a massive home built in 1891 for Eleanor Medill, the daughter of Chicago Tribune publisher and former mayor Joseph Medill. The Madlener House was built for brewery owner Albert F. Madlener and is a fine example of prairie school architecture. The wooden alley, as its name suggests, is an alley made entirely out of wood blocks and is one of only two wooden alleys remaining in the city of Chicago. It's a throwback to the days when sidewalks and streets were regularly made out of wooden blocks. It was built in 1909 and restored in 2011. Normally for these neighborhood guides, we love to go inside the restaurants and bars that make the neighborhood so special. Gold Coast is no different than any other Chicago neighborhood as far as having amazing places to eat and drink. Le Colonial is near the top of my list, something that we always get for takeout. It's delicious French Vietnamese cuisine right on Oak Street in the heart of Gold Coast. So yummy. And since we can't go inside today, we did some takeout. We're in the park next to Lakeshore Drive, still in the Gold Coast, about to chow down on some delicious food. Another great local food and drink option in Gold Coast is Goddess in the Grocer on State Street in between Cedar and Elm. I got myself some espresso and I'm ready to get my caffeine on. Cheers. More great food and drink options in Gold Coast include Third Coast Cafe, the oldest cafe in the neighborhood, Fig and Olive when you want to escape to the south of France, and Lou Malnati's for classic deep dish pizza. The bar scene in Gold Coast is lively, with places like Hopsmith Tavern, Butch McGuire's, and the original Mother's. The list of things to do in Gold Coast starts and ends with Oak Street Beach, one of Chicago's premier beaches. You can rent a chair and watch the waves of Lake Michigan roll in, and if you turn around, you get one of the most beautiful skyline views in the entire city. Charnley Persky House was built in 1892 and was designed by Louis Sullivan and Frank Lloyd Wright. It's one of the most important homes to the history of modern architecture in the United States. And thus, it's a Chicago landmark and also a National Historic Landmark. Today, it's home to the Society of Architectural Historians and it's a museum free to view and tour every Wednesday. It's definitely one of the most historic things to do in Gold Coast. This mansion built in 1917 is a replica of a building in Versailles. It's now the home of the International Museum of Surgical Science, North America's only museum dedicated to the history of surgery. Admission is $17 and it's definitely one of the coolest and most unique things to do in Gold Coast. The Oak Street Retail District in the Gold Coast is one of the best places to shop luxury retail in the city. It's Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive meets Fifth Avenue in New York City. To get your worship on, attend a service at St. Christomom's Church or Lakeshore Drive Synagogue. And for the kids, there's Gowdy Square Park Playground. The Ambassador Hotel is Chicago's original boutique hotel and opened in 1926. Latin School of Chicago was founded in 1888 and is one of the city's top private schools. As far as living in Gold Coast, you can find a one bedroom apartment here for as low as $13.75. You can also find one for $27.90. So it's really about your needs and budget. Condos here start at $300K and homes can be bought for as little as one to three million or as high as 15 million. The vibe in Gold Coast is based off of the wealthy residents, historic charm, and close proximity to the downtown area. It's at the doorstep of Magnificent Mile on the shore of Lake Michigan and just south of the park. I definitely want to live here as soon as I can afford one of these historic mansions.
Gold Coast is an important part of Chicago's story. As the wealthiest neighborhood in the city, it is full of history waiting to be discovered. As with many other Chicago neighborhoods, it has seen some of its treasured landmarks fall to the wrecking ball. I'm sure if the Palmer Mansion existed today, it'd be a museum visited by people from all around the world. In the future, I'd love to see more wealthy Chicagoans of color living in Gold Coast. Did you get the answer to the trivia question? In 1929, $1,000 for rent is equivalent to $15,000 today. In the comments, let me know what neighborhood you want to see next. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and finesse that like button. And I would really appreciate it if you shared this video with your very best friend. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. We out of here for now. Peace and blessings. Came the original Playboy Mansion. Once Hefner left Chicago for the West Coast, big mistake in my opinion, he donated it to the artists. He donated to the... Blah, blah. The Seven Houses on Lakeshore Drive is a historic uh, Chicago landmark district. I'll wait for a small lull in the construction. Mmm, it's bitter, just like I like my espresso. It's strong. It's a double espresso. Was that good?